Hey, hey. You're back in the garage with Easy Cheesy. How about this? Uh, today's the day we're going to uh, do the install of our cutter brake, steering brake, whatever you want to call it here. So, I think I am going to do something innovative that I have never ever seen anybody do before. I'm going to put my cutter brake right between my legs. I've had it over here on the passenger side and you believe it or not you can get confused reaching over there and uh, grabbing your shifter or your brake grabbing the wrong one when you want to I mean thing when you when things happen suddenly um, I don't know I had it there years ago on a different car and I, I just said if I ever built another one I wasn't gonna put it there so and the other thing is you'll have a tendency when it's on this side on the right side that your right elbow is going to be jamming the hell out of your passenger or who's ever sitting there you got to really make sure that when you're in your rear wood complete rear position that you've got enough room for your elbow if you're wearing a coat or bulky stuff you don't want your elbow keep ramming into the seat and things like that you could and this is what happens a lot of times you'll see guys with them uh, in the front here now you might say well go with the two-handle cutter brake um, I got used to the single and I like it better nothing to matter with two but if you are uh, got one wheel locked up and you want to switch to the other one and, and actually completely move your hand over to the, another lever uh, there's a chance you might miss and it'll screw things up. You got to act fast uh, usually. Now, let me climb in. We'll get it from. Uh, sorry about the shaky cam. Now, since you do have to climb in from the top on these type of cars and most cars with a cage, um, you come down the bottom. So if you look down here between my legs. All of a sudden, you know, it's not in the way. I have room over here. I don't want to have my knee hitting against the handle here. Uh, you've seen some of my other videos where Kurt likes to rest his arm up there and is, is just ready. He's on standby. You know, he's got his long handle for more leverage and he has his up high. Well, you know, that's good for Kurt, but uh, it all depends on what you get used to. And, and you're not building your car for somebody else. You're building it for yourself. And keep in mind, keep in mind that whatever you decide, it doesn't make any difference. You can always change it. You can always change it later. So keep that in mind. Now, I thought about turning it this way. And I don't want a bunch of brake lines and connections out there. I don't want to be catching my foot on it when I slide my foot back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I want you to notice that this steering wheel is not centered on my body. This uh, control box is not centered on the car. It favors the uh, passenger side here. Uh, center would be more like, more like right in here to the left side of the box. It's, it's all about ergonomics. It's about getting the visual. You see how if this box was centered, then my steering wheel might block out one of the emergency lights. And this oil pressure light, you definitely want to be able to see that. Some guys will take a large turn signal and connect that to their oil pressure sensor so that it really, you know, a big, huge light lets you know, hey, you got no oil pressure, shut it off. Um, and a lot of times with this type of a car, you'll be driving on unlevel ground at an angle and the oil will fill up on a valve cover and your light will come on and you know that you better push in the clutch and let it come down to level ground and get your oil pressure back uh, and, and the oil down in the sump where it's supposed to go and it takes just a few seconds to do that, but it's stuff that you need to pay attention to. So, now... <clears throat> This uh, pipe here, everybody tells me, ah, what do you keep that thing in there, you know? Uh, cut that thing out. Well, I'm trying to keep the classic frame. This is a 50-year-old race car frame. This was part of original design. For all I know, it may have been a requirement. Even these big, huge, I assume these were for lights or something like that, a, a light tab. Um, yeah, I don't drive at night. I don't have to worry about any of that sort of stuff. And 
I'm not ready to just cut them off because as far as doing it for a weight savings reason, um, man, this thing is just so overbuilt anyhow that, uh, you know, uh, cutting all this stuff up for two pounds of weight savings or Nah, I ain't, ain't going to happen. And I'm I'm going to leave this stuff on here too. I will build, if it comes to the point where I am not happy enough with this thing and I can't keep up with my friends, then I'll either turbocharge it or I'll uh, make the car lighter. And I'm not going to turbocharge it necessarily because um, all of a sudden i got to look at uh, a way more expensive transmission because these transmissions just get torn up with that much power. Um, so it's all about power to weight ratio and handling and you know the pros and cons of this style of buggy versus a long travel or mid travel car or even a side by side. Those side by sides are not lightweight and they got that noisy little engine and that belt drive. I want a transmission. I want to be able to shift. I want to have a clutch. I want to be able to control things and I like to drive so that's that's all relative to what you like or what works for you so let's get back on this cutter brake these are eighth inch pipe fittings and this is where the main supply from your foot pedal from the master cylinders got to come in here so you want to incorporate a brake light switch on that section of line somewhere in the line so uh, that being said, we're going to set it down here. We're going to be sitting in the seat. We're going to we're going to pull this thing back, and we're going to see in the full rearward position. That's probably where I want it to be. And as you can see, it's not centered under the steering wheel. This is to the to the casual observer who doesn't own a car like this. They're gonna, you're gonna say. Now you also want to keep in mind that when you're wearing your safety harness, seat belts, shoulder harnesses, can you activate it by pushing forward? Now it's a little bit of a reach going forward, so I think I want to come back a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Now I've got, I've got motion without using my upper body. This is all just using my arm. So in the full back position, I still, I don't want to be submarining and catch my crotch there. And in a, an emergency crash with your seat belt on, you know, they have a submarine belt strap that comes up here. I don't wear that. The last guy I had this car had one of those installed, but I'm not, I'm not going that route. So that's pretty much where I want the unit to sit. Alrighty, no magic here. <clears throat> Pulled the seat out, uh, had it in place. You can see that it's not symmetrical to anything other than my crotch. <laughs> and uh, I just sort of uh, in place, I drilled the first hole, put a bolt, a uh, quarter inch bolt, a uh, grade 8 flat washer, and a an nylock nut on the bottom, snugged it down kind of straightened it back and forth, uh, kind of eyeballed it. And then I did the same thing. I just drilled right through the aluminum plate. That way I know you don't have to make a template. You don't have to lay it down, mark it, and do all this fancy stuff. Just drilled it right through the hole. I did this one first. Uh, actually, I, I kind of tapped it because this was in my way. And uh, then I did the second and third point. way. You do it whatever way you want to do it. And I guarantee after a few trips, you'll get used to what it is. It'll just be so instinctive, you won't have to think, you know, well, let's see, do I push it or do I pull it? I think that's why a lot of guys like the two levers, because left is on the left, right's on the right. But I just don't like moving my hand from lever to lever. And uh, I'm not afraid to do innovative, different things. Uh, when I built my other buggy <clears throat> many years ago, um, I was the first one in our group to use those laser lights that are so common now. Nobody uses the big full-size lights. Everybody was using KC headlights, and I had these little compact aluminum ones with a 75-watt bulb that were put out so much light it was unreal. 
and everybody teased me about it because I of what I paid for them at the time they were kind of a new thing um, I was the first one in my group to use uh, suspension seats which I now have in the fiberglass car those were originally in my sand car and everybody just teased me to death you know oh look at those heavy ass seats yeah nothing but sand traps those things on man nah. and and they all had these lightweight fiberglass plastic seats but I guarantee you every one of their girlfriends and wives came over and were looking at my seat and pushing on them and you know go ahead and sit in it you know and they'd sit in it and then uh, they were going back over why can't we have seats like that and uh, you know the guys already had their buggies finished and uh, I got a real good deal on the seats uh, when I bought them this company uh, that had them on the showroom floor was going out of business and and I, I went ahead and got a good deal on them um, but yeah, I was, you know, I, and maybe this will catch on. I mean, I can't think of a better spot. Having it between your legs, because you can use it with either hand. I can grab it with operator with my left or my right hand. And I don't get it confused with a shifter. My elbow's not going to be interfering with uh, anything or anybody. I don't have to reach around this pipe. Uh, my leg is going to rest comfortably over here and won't be in the way. So, eh. Uh, you know, I might uh, I might say something negative later on, but for right now, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. The, this way, even with the harness on, I can pull it back with either hand, right or left hand, and I can push it forward with uh, either hand. And I don't think I'm going to be using it that much for actual turning because the front end of this car is pretty heavy. The car overall is is pretty heavy in an ultralight type sand rail where you have a very light front end. Uh, you can really move the car around and if you're doing wheelies and you just have your front wheels off the ground that that this is the way that you would steer it is by moving this back and forth now when you put your foot brake on with your foot it activates both rear wheels at the same time that's just fine for this old man I'm I'm done with the show and shine crowd uh, you know I admire it and I I think it's cool but I am not gonna panic every time one of my grandkids comes over and jumps up and starts climbing on it and putting their feet on the frame and using it for a jungle gym I came up with and uh, I hope it works out I don't plan on using it a lot but uh, in different situations if you were to get one uh, wheel off the ground maybe on a ridge or you're trying to make a hard turn or you're in a mud hole and one wheel keeps spinning you can utilize that uh, turning brake to to stop the spinning wheel and that will transfer power over to the opposite rear wheel and maybe get you going in or out forward or reverse whatever it is you're trying to do so yeah it's just uh, another little toy I like the way it, it is tucked out of the way and it's kind of amazing that it's so similar to the JMR shifter knob. I think that it's kind of uh, funny how that worked out. So, yeah, kind of unconventional, but uh, I've never seen one. And you may think it's ridiculous. It might not be for you, but it. Uh, I think it's going to work out just dandy for me. So, and uh, hope that helps somebody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy jeezy.